When it comes to armor in Monster Hunter, defenses and resistances are nice, but what you really want are the armor skills. This guide series is going to focus on a progression path that you can easily follow for a reasonable build to get you through low rank and high rank. In low rank, progression is fairly linear and there isn't a lot of need to deviate. High rank is much more open-ended and will have many more options for you to explore. High rank builds will focus on decoration lists and charmless setups as those require rare materials and a lot of luck for decorations. You will need to make a choice between alpha and beta gear. Alpha gear has more skills, but sometimes has skills that aren't particularly useful on them. The beta versions usually give up skills for decoration slots. If you don't have decorations, the alpha sets are always better. If you have powerful decorations, the beta pieces are usually the better option as it will allow for further customization. These builds are reasonably effective and will be sufficient for getting you through the game. You may have skills that you favor on certain weapon types that aren't listed, and you should experiment to learn your playstyle. Your default armor is terrible, and you'll want to upgrade it right away. The easiest thing you can do is just build the entire bone set. This will be mostly beneficial for the headpiece's health boost, granting you plus 15 maximum HP, and the bone chest's attack up, granting you plus 3 attack power. The remaining bone pieces will benefit certain weapon types and not others. The gloves will give slugger, which is good for blunt weapons like hammer, hunting horn, and file attacks from the charge blade and switch axe. Bone Coil is only good for Hunting Horn, but it will extend the length of your songs. The Bone Greaves grant Entomologist, which helps prevent you from destroying Vespoids and Hornitars so you can carve them. Regardless of the skills it offers, this set is extremely easy to build and represents a good armor value spike that you should take starting out. Early on you'll be given an assignment to hunt Kestodons. After carving some, you'll unlock the ability to build Kestodon Gloves. Build these for Affinity Sliding, which gives you a temporary boost to your critical hit rate after sliding for a short period of time. They also have a strong defense boost over bone gauntlets and should be picked up for most weapon types. This set will be enough to tide you over until you hunt Great Jagras. Afterwards, you'll want to look into picking up the Jagras Coil. This provides Fortify, which gives you an attack and defense bonus if your HP reaches zero and you're carted back to camp. Fortify is a nice bonus for new players, and even veteran players will cart occasionally. It's a good pickup for all weapon types. Then you'll have to hunt Kuluyaku. You'll want to build both its Kulu male chest armor and the Kulu Greaves leg armor. The chest grants stamina surge which increases your stamina recovery rate. This is a great skill for every weapon type, but certain weapons will benefit much more from it. The Kulu Greaves grant critical eye which increases your affinity or critical hit rate by 3%. This isn't huge, but going from 0 to 3% affinity will actually allow you to perform critical hits and it will be a significant damage increase. This will be an acceptable set of baseline armor for the next mandatory fights. From here on though, things will be handled on a weapon by weapon basis. Switch Axe, like most of the other weapons, really favors stacking as much attack, affinity, and sharpness as possible. Switch Axe does suffer from relatively low mobility, so skills like Evade Extender are definitely welcome and recommended to take when you can. The base armor set will have to tide you over for longer than I'd like. Take out Pookie Pookie and Baroth. Unfortunately, there are no offerings here that benefit Switch Axe. After hunting Juratotus, there's an upgrade that you could take. Juratotus' Greaves grant Focus. Focus decreases the amount of time required to charge your gauge. It's actually not the best skill on Switch Axe. It will reduce the amount required to fill the gauge by one swing at the most. It can be a reasonable pickup, and there isn't much else at this point in the game. Feel free to stick with Critical Eye from the Kulu Greaves. Then you'll have to hunt Toby Kadachi, and finally there are some reasonable offerings. The Kadachi Helm grants Constitution. It will reduce the amount of stamina dodging and your wild swing will use. You'll also want to build the Kadachi Van Braces for Evade Extender, which will help you reposition. This is an extremely valuable pickup for Switch Axe as it makes it much more mobile. It also has great synergy with the Kadachi Helm's constitution. And Janath is next, and unfortunately, it has no reasonable options for us. Once you're in the Coral Highlands, you'll have to hunt Paolumu, but you should deviate and hunt Zitsiyaku. The Zitsi male grants constitution, reducing your stamina drain while dodging, as well as giving you a reasonable defense increase. Then hunt Paolumu as part of the story. You can switch the Kadachi Helm for Paolumu's hat to trade constitution for stamina surge. Both will have similar performance, but the Lumu hat will have superior defenses. You can also upgrade the Jagras Coil to the Lumu Coil if you find yourself taking a lot of damage. Head down to the Rotten Vale and hunt Hornitars. Build the Greaves for Handicraft, which increases your weapon's sharpness. The extra sharpness will be more worthwhile than the marginal improvement Focus gives. Then finish off Radoban and Legiana. 
Neither of these monsters have much offerings for us, but after Legiana, you'll have access to Monster Bone Plus and can build the Death Stench gear. Build the Death Stench shield to maintain Handicraft while gaining significantly higher defenses over Hornetar Greaves. Next is Odegaron. Pick up its coil for Critical Eye. You may also want to consider the Vambraces for Constitution since the Kadachi Vambraces could use an upgrade. Then move on to Hunt Rathalos and Diablos. You're so close to high rank here that you may want to avoid farming and just move on. Of course, this is an idealized armor guide. Rathalos has good gear. Pick up Rathalos' helm for attack up. Then build the mail for weakness exploit, giving you a massive affinity bonus while attacking weak points. The three-piece set bonus of critical element can be okay on switch axe, but you'll have to choose to give up your hand or leg armor, neither of which are great options. Build this set if you want, but it's time to move on to high rank. High rank finally introduces us to some options. There's a lot of upgrades available now, and you can immediately go and hunt high rank versions of everything in low rank. The easy answer is that anything that worked for you in low rank will work here while providing additional skills and high rank defenses. This guide assumes you have no useful decorations, as such the beta gear is simply worse than the alpha gear as it loses skills for decoration slots. If you have decorations, consider the beta versions of some pieces, otherwise stick with alpha. The same goes for charms, and this armor guide is charmless. Go ahead and pick up whatever charms you see fit, like attack, handicraft, or even evade extender. Unfortunately, you're going to lose all your set bonuses and kind of start back from square one. The Kulu Headpiece Alpha should be picked up immediately for a second stack of Weakness Exploit. You'll lose Critical Element, but gaining the extra affinity will be worth it. Then head to the Rotten Vale to hunt Hornitars to pick up the Hornitar Greaves Beta for Handicraft. Afterwards, you'll want to hunt Toby Kadachi to build the Vambraces Alpha to regain Evade Extender. Level 3 Evade Extender is ideal, but the 2 you get here is a fair compromise and is quite noticeable. If you don't feel like you need Evade Extender, you can pick up the Bone Vambraces Alpha for Attack Up. Now hunt Pink Rathian and pick up its Wrath Heart Coil Alpha for Handicraft and Poison Resistance. That should make you adequately prepared to take on the higher tier monsters of high rank. Odegaron's set is a reasonable choice. It provides a lot of critical eye, speed sharpening, and the 4 piece set bonus is Protective Polish. Protective Polish prevents your weapon from losing sharpness for 60 seconds after sharpening. It's a great skill, but you do give up a lot to get it. The 2 piece set bonus of Punishing Draw won't have great synergy with Switch Axe, but you'll pick it up along the way if you go for this set. Build the Headgear Alpha for Critical Eye, the Gloves for Constitution and Critical Eye, the Coil for Critical Eye and Speed Sharpening, and the Boots for Quick Sheath and Critical Eye. You'll want to pair this with the low rank Rathalos chest to maintain weakness exploit. The coil is a good pickup regardless of going for the 4 piece bonus or not. Of course, Rathalos will be the next target to upgrade the chest to the high rank version. The next big set is the Rathalos set. The 2 piece set is Critical Element which will represent a reasonable damage upgrade for elemental switch axes of all types. The two-piece set is extremely easy to get and has amazing synergy with the chest and boots which give 3 points of weakness exploit. Grab the Rathalos Greaves Alpha for Jump Master and weakness exploit, then pick up the male beta to max out weakness exploit and for a decoration slot over fire attack. This frees up your headgear for something else. You'll want to consider things like the Rathalos head for attack up or the Wrath Heart Helm beta for finishing out a Vade extender and finally the Zora headgear beta for handicraft. These sets will be adequate for everything else in the game, everything after this is just a matter of customization and preference once you get access to better charms and decorations. The Elder Dragon sets are usually safe bets but won't necessarily be better or worse than this, just different. Nergigante's set is a great general purpose set. It has maximum might which gives you a 30% affinity increase while at maximum stamina. Maximum might works really well on switch axe but you won't be able to utilize it shortly after sidestepping or after a wild swing. It's a very consistent affinity increase on all monster parts, not just their weak points. It also has Agitator, which has a very high uptime of increased attack and affinity. Then it has attack and stamina surge to round it out. It's a good general purpose set that's easy to build. Nergigante's Dragon King Eye Patch has weakness exploit level 2 and a tier 3 decoration slot making it a great pickup. You'll be able to build the Dober gear with Elder Dragon Bones and Elder Dragon Blood after Nergigante. Pick up the Dober Male Beta and the Dober Greaves Beta for more attack up options. Kushala Daura's gear has a lot of handicraft. You'll want to look at the Kushala Sista Beta for Handicraft. The best pickup is Kushala Cruise Alpha for Evade Extender and Handicraft. 
Teoster's Van Braces are a great pickup and tie nicely with the Dragon King Eye Patch to max out weakness exploit while providing some very valuable decoration slots. Your final build will want to incorporate level 2 Evade Extender, but preferably level 3, with as much handicraft and damage boosting skills as you can get your grubby little paws on. Your final build may look something like this, but keep in mind you'll have to adjust based on your own luck with decorations and charm materials. You'll definitely want to incorporate a protective polish decoration, as well as a non-elemental boost decoration for raw switch axes. 